Hey, what's everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to add in text or an icon or an image onto folded textured surfaces and make it look good in Adobe Photoshop. So you can see we've added this, both this icon and this text and it folds with the image. So let's get started. First things first, I imported a photo off of Envato Elements. It's a great subscription-based service where you can get an unlimited amount of stock footage for videos, photos, and templates and you just gotta pay a monthly fee and you can basically download as much as you want. Check out a link in the description below if that interests you. So I've imported this photo and the first thing I need to do is create a displacement map based off of the photo. We're gonna go over to our layers and then go to the channels tab right here. We're gonna look for whatever channel is the most contrast. The blue channel seems to have the most contrast. Another way to do this if these are just not working is go to layers, black and white the image and then add a little contrast to it. But once we find what we want, we're gonna do the exact same thing uh, if it was the other method you just export it in this particular case we're going to right click and hit duplicate channel we're going to make it a new channel and this is going to now be called displacement map 2 and the reason i'm calling it 2 is because i've already had one for the previous example to show off at the beginning of the video it is going to immediately generate a second tab with our displacement map the one thing we want to do is we want to go up to our filter down to blur and then into the gaussian blur I'm gonna click a part of the this image that has some texture on it. This wood is a great place to start. The reason we wanna do this is we wanna remove any texture. You see if I start with basically no blur here, we have this sharp looking texture, this wood grain, it looks rough. Great for like high profile images, but for a displacement map, it's gonna add very strange uh, things, artifacts to our, our, our displacements. So we wanna keep increasing this by one until that basically disappears. Three is the point where it's just becoming color. You can see that it's, it's blurred itself out to basically nothingness. That's what we want. We're gonna click okay now, and the entire thing will be blurred. You're gonna see it's not gonna change much. Again, all we're doing is removing textures. We're then going to click Control S or Command S or File Save, either of those. And then we're just gonna save a new displacement map. Uh, if you've typed in the, the name, it's already filled in. We now have our displacement map ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here and we're going to import our different images. So I'm just gonna go into the downloads folder, the very top here, and then we're going to grab this star and drop it in. Now make sure you drop it into the layer. Uh, you can see that it was black and white because my channels were still selected. So make sure you either reselect or just click out of it. We now have the star selected. I'm going to drag and make it just a little bit bigger here. Click enter to set the transformation and now we can actually add it in. So we're going to go up to filter, down to distort, over to displace. I'm using 15 for this. Anywhere from five to 15 is good. Um, really play around, start at the low scale, five, then 10, then 15. Basically this is gonna create the effect stronger and stronger. If you go too high, it's gonna look really sort of crazy. So you just want it just enough that it works. So in this particular case, I needed the 15 for it to work. I'm gonna click okay. We're gonna click on the displacement map we created, click open up on that. We are then going to go ahead and drop the opacity down a touch. So 75% or so. And you're gonna see that we have indeed, we have good curves that fit the different areas of this map. Now, the next step we need to do is we need to go to the star and add a linear burn on it. This is gonna make it sort of fit the color space of the image just a little bit better. But right now, it looks good. It looks a little too, I guess I'd say like uh, poppy. So we may want to add like an adjustment on it or uh, reduce its opacity even more. Um, another option what we can do is we can actually right click on this and go up to blending options. Look on the blending options down for the blend diff down to underlying layer. If you see we move this over, it just chooses the highlights of what should actually be blended, either the underlying layer or the top layer. No amount of this really looks good unless you're going for like a graphic t-shirt or something that's supposed to have this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to hold the command key instead of and drag this over. This is going to put a gradient on it. And you're going to see it actually adds these sort of highlights back into the image where the highlights would be blowing out the color of the image. So now we have this and it looks a little shiny. At this point, it looks a little like latex. If we reduce the opacity even more or maybe the saturation, it'll start looking like a nice printed on version and so this is looking pretty realistic and pretty good next step what we're going to do is we're going to go into the text here to create the text and let's just say uh choose our beds like it's an advertisement 
So we're going to cl click on this. I'm going to drag it into place, just anywhere you want, right about here. We're going to repeat the process, filter, distort, displace. This one needs to be converted to a smart object, so go ahead and click OK on that. You're going to click the same thing, displacement 2, up here, linear burn, drop that opacity a touch, and then finally, we're going to go blending option, commander, alt click, blend it in just a little on those highlights and we are done. That's how quickly you can apply this effect once you know what you are doing. So if you wanna turn it on and off, you can see the change whenever you turn this on and off, and it's looking great. The last thing I wanna tell you, if you wanted to, for example, move this, well, not the image over, if you wanted to take this text right here and you wanted to move this text over, and I'm having a problem here, so I'm going to go ahead and right click on this, or my bad, I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer. Um, I'm gonna grab this text right here and move it to the side. You're gonna notice that it doesn't move with the background. It kind of looks like it does because of linear burn, but it's not actually adjusting. If you want to readjust it, right click on this filter and hit edit smart filter. Just click okay again, click on the displacement map again, and it'll readjust it to its new location. So you don't have to like keep deleting it and re-adding it, you just keep editing it and replacing it. But that is how you add this crazy awesome effect of that Photoshop can do where you add things and make they, them look realistic on folded textures in Photoshop. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and thumb the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you'd like to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, make videos on all the Adobe products. And until next time everybody, see ya.